As we'll see in future videos, there are three different vectors through which ideas are submitted, and those are represented by the three horizontal lanes. You can see the first lane is employee-driven ideas, the second lane is COE-driven ideas, and the third lane is citizen developer ideas. The columns represent the workflow each ID would pass through. So notice we have submit, approve, assess and review, qualify, technical review, routing, and then finally build, test and deploy. There are some nuances I'd like to point out here. We can see that the employee driven lane is the only lane that has an idea approver. And you can see in the red text that that idea approver's job is to either approve the idea or identify it as a duplicate or reject it for a variety of reasons. In the citizen developer lane at the bottom, that's the only lane that has a technical reviewer. And we also see that the program manager can route an idea that was submitted by a citizen developer to either have the COE project manager work on it with the COE developers or have a citizen developer power user implement the idea instead. The other notable thing is that the program manager role is ubiquitous across all three lanes. So we can see that that's a very important role and the role should be filled by somebody close to the top of the COE. As we'll see shortly in the Automation Hub demos, there are a variety of roles and collaborators that interact on any given idea. Automation Hub is pretty sophisticated, so the list of roles and collaborators can be a little bit intimidating. Depending upon how large your company is, you can possibly omit some of these roles and only focus on the most important ones. Some of the more important roles I'll highlight here are the standard user and the authorized user, both of which can submit ideas. The citizen developer self user can also submit ideas. So those are the submitters for the three lanes I described earlier. The idea approver approves ideas that were submitted by the standard user. And the program manager, as I mentioned, is that important and ubiquitous role that serves as a leader within the platform. Collaborators are added to ideas after they've been submitted. And these include things like the business analyst, the solution architect, the RPA developer, and the process owner. Those people are usually selected and assigned by the project manager. Here are some definitions for the roles we see in the standard workflow. I'm not going to read all of these because they are available for you to look at inside the Automation Hub tool itself. And what I mean by that is after we do the setup and tour, you'll find that on the admin console, you can go to manage access and click on this roles tab. And you can see that there's a roles tab and a collaborator roles tab. And when you scroll down and look at these, any one you click on, has the definition shown right up here at the top right. So you don't necessarily have to memorize all these role descriptions because like I said, they exist right here inside the tool. And there you can see in collaborators, there's the description for business analyst, solution architect, and so on. So I'll skim through these real quick. You can see that a standard user can explore existing automations. They can submit new employee driven ideas. They can manage their own components. They can download components. And the key thing to know about the standard user is that all users have this permission assigned by default when their account is created. Other more advanced permissions are added on top. So now the authorized user is typically somebody who has more knowledge about RPA and they can submit COE driven ideas that include the detailed assessment already completed. Next, we see the idea approver and this role is to identify duplicate ideas and approve and reject ideas that were submitted by standard users. Notice the idea approver doesn't approve ideas that were submitted by the COE authorized user. The program manager is typically assigned to the center of excellence leader. This person manages the pipeline and accesses dashboards and reports to make decisions about the automation program. This role can also designate who should be an authorized user for submitting ideas. Process owners are subject matter experts who can help complete the detailed assessments for employee driven ideas that were submitted by these standard users. They can also perform updates on the about page, provide complete and accurate documentation for the process and participate in UAT. Finally, the project manager allocates collaborators to the automation initiative. They perform and update the cost benefit analysis, track implementation progress while the idea works through the analyze, design, develop, and test phases, and they keep stakeholders informed and manage expectations. The roles for citizen development are slightly different. You can see there's a citizen developer self who can automate low risk, simple tasks and activities for their own personal use, almost like using Excel as a productivity tool. They can then share an automation and submit it for review. 
The business reviewer will evaluate automations shared by citizen developer self-users, and they can approve a shared automation so the program manager can then gauge interest prior to sending that automation for technical review. Or they can instead bypass the program manager and directly send it for a technical review. Again, like the standard roles, the program manager here is typically assigned to the center of excellence leader. For citizen developed automations, however, the program manager reviews the interest level from other users about a shared automation and uses that to determine whether the automation should be promoted into a technical review. Then that program manager routes the automation either to a citizen developer power user or to the COE to implement any rework that would improve it beyond the form that the citizen developer originally created. The technical reviewer can identify code quality issues and either approve it to go straight into production for a larger group or determine that rework might be needed, in which case it returns to a program manager to determine whether a power user or the COE should implement it. Finally, that citizen developer power user can not only automate tasks and process themselves, but they can also do more advanced rework when ideas created by citizen developer self-users are going to be deployed for more broad use by the whole team. Now here are some definitions for collaborators. And again, you don't have to memorize this stuff because it does exist on the Automation Hub itself. The employee idea submitter is auto-assigned to anyone who submits an idea. And that grants the person basic contributor access. The process owner will take ideas that were submitted by standard users and supply detailed assessments. They can also perform updates on about pages, provide process-related documentation, and participate in UAT. Like we discussed in the previous slide, project managers will allocate collaborators, they'll perform and update the cost-benefit analysis, they'll keep track of implementation progress, keep stakeholders informed, and manage expectations. And now we see implementation roles, business analyst, solution architect, and RPA developer. These are the folks that gather requirements, design the solution, and actually build it using UiPath Studio. So now you have to start thinking about who the employees will be in your company that will fill these personas. So for example, for the standard workflow, who will be your RPA sponsor, your program manager, your idea approvers, process owners, and so on. If you're going to have a citizen development program, you need to do the same thing for that lane. Decide who your citizen developers are, who the power users might be, who the program managers are, and it's possible that the program managers for citizen development could be the same as the program managers for the standard lane. You also might need business reviewers and technical reviewers for the citizen development workflow. So I know that was a lot and it might be hard to conceptualize since you haven't really seen the tool yet, but hopefully it gave you some big picture ideas about how sophisticated Automation Hub actually is and how much value it will add to your organization. So with that, Let's jump into the setup section to create our Automation Hub account and start using it.